let's party! And let's add a custom music disc to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh, 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 right. Let's find ourselves back in the trailer once more. And in this, I don't even, listen, okay. I don't even know what the frick that intro was. But I'm, we'll keep it, you know, frick it. We'll do it live, okay? We'll do it live. Anyway, <laughs> this tutorial will be adding a custom music disc to our Minecraft mode over here. And you will once again find that after you've added the first couple of sounds, a music disc is actually more straightforward than you might think. However, as per usual, there are, I think in this case, one or two sort of differences that are going to be uh, quite interesting to keep in mind. But let's just start by first and foremost adding the sound event over here because when you have a custom song, you will need a custom sound, like a custom event over here, like a custom sound event, right? So that is going to be a public static final registry object of type. And can you guess it? A sound event, of course, bar underscore brawl equal to the register sound event method. And that's going to be the bar underscore brawl. However, we'll also need a key, a resource key to be specific. And for that, we can either make a custom method, but we can also just do a public static final resource key of a type jukebox song. In this case, very important jukebox song bar underscore brawl underscore key. Then that's going to be equal to resource key dot create for the registries of jukebox underscore song with a resource location from namespace and path. And that's going to be for tutorial mod .mod ID with the name bar underscore brawl here in this case. And that's going to be the key well, created as well. Now, let's first of all step through all of the stuff that we need for the sound itself. And then we're going to go through and do the item. So when it comes to the sound, well, that is going to be a normal OGG file once again. And this one is right here. That's going to be okay. And we don't even need to open it, right? Obviously, OGG files are going to look crazy inside of a text editor because it's not a text file. It's it's an actual, like, a sound file. So that's why that sometimes happens. But regardless, though, that is the bar underscore bar OGG, which also has to be defined in the sounds.json. But that is very straightforward because here we have the same thing, bar underscore brawl, which is obviously the name of the sound event. And that is then going to have a sounds list over here. And the sounds list it's going to look kind of like this. It's going to actually have a an object inside of it with a name. And this name is going to be tutorial mod colon bar underscore brawl. And then also a stream, which is going to be true. So the bar brawl right here obviously refers back to the OGG file again, while this one refers back to the name given right here in the register sound event method. And the stream true simply has to be true because this is a sort of a sound that is streamed, right? This is not a sound that sort of just gets played once and then it's fine, but it continues to be played. That's sort of the idea. And once we have this, we can actually go, go outside of this and we can close we can close this and we can close this one too. And then we can actually go to the mod items class and create our custom item. Because of course a music disc, well that is an item, right? So we're gonna have a public static final registry object of type item. This is going to be our bar underscore brawl underscore music underscore disc equal to the items deferred register dot register passing in the name, which is bar underscore brawl underscore music underscore disc, as you might imagine. Second parameter is a supplier of a new item. Crazily enough, but it is. And then we need new item properties where, and this is the crazy thing, we call the jukebox playable method, jukebox playable, where we then pass in mod sounds that bar brawl key. And we also want this to stack to one only. And that is now a music disc. After we've done this, we can go on to the creative mode tab and just add this right here. This is the barbell music disc. There you go. We can even add a normal item model data gen over here because, well, this is a normal item. A basic item over here this is the barbell music disc. But the translation is actually something that's quite interesting. And that is, there is also a description right here. We're going to define this in a second. And you can basically see that, well, the normal item name is just the item name here and then in the description you basically always have the the author and then the name of the song over here i've also added cc0 to denote that this is under the public domain license creative commons zero so do keep that in mind as well and with this done we have also the texture oh that would be that would have been crazy if i forgot the texture 
that would have not been good. But yes, of course, we also have a texture for the item. And this is the second to last step because the last step is actually we need a data JSON file. Now, with our previously made data pack entries, we could in theory also generate this JSON file via data gen. I think this is one of those things where, you know, does it make sense to use data gen? Does it make sense to do it manually? Either one works totally fine. The dev the general makeup of that, that class that you would need to make should actually be the same as the trim materials in theory, right? Like, like it will look almost identical, except for trim material, it would be of Jukebox song. But in our case, we're just going to go manually in the resources folder. We're going to right click new directory called data. Into so there, another new directory called tutorial mod. And instead of there, another new directory, I'm going to call this the Jukebox underscore song. And then we're going to copy over the bar underscore brawl JSON file. And here it's quite important that the JSON file has the same name as we're giving the jukebox song key right here. So this name has to match this name right here, the name of the file. And then this name obviously refers to the sound event. So this name right here refers to this name given to the sound event right here. And with that done, you can see some of the rest here as well. So the translate description over here, comparator output, that's just the comparator value basically that is output when you have this in a jukebox and then the redstone value that is being output and the length in seconds should basically be self-explanatory. With all of this done, we can run the data gen over here to get us the singular JSON file that we have to generate. This being the item model JSON file for our Brawl Bra Bar Brawl music disc. There you go. And once that is through, well, then let's let us be serenaded by our new custom music disc. And let's take a look. All right, we're back in Minecraft and let's just see. First of all, of course, the music disc is successfully added. And if I put it in. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And if I move away, you can hear that it is getting quieter and quieter because the file itself is in mono. This is extremely important, right? The OGG file has to be in mono. Otherwise, if it was in stereo, then what would happen is that you would be able to hear this particular song on the entire in the entire world, right? Like it doesn't matter how many blocks, millions of blocks away you'd be, you would always hear that freaking song. And that is usually not something you want. But yeah, that is a custom music disc added to Minecraft. Awesome. As per usual, all of the code and everything you might need is linked in the description below. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom effects. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.